What's up guys, Jay here, and today I have a very different kind of video for you. Don't worry, the Deep Rock content is not going anywhere, but I just wanted to try something a little different. Today I'm going to be beginning an attempt at an Elden Ring Nuzlocke. If you don't know what either of those two terms means, I'll give you a brief explanation. Elden Ring is a very challenging yet very fun and satisfying game made by From Software. A Nuzlocke is a term used in Pokemon games in order to make them a little bit harder. In Pokemon, the rules for a Nuzlocke are you can only catch the first Pokemon you find in an area if one of your Pokemon faints it is considered dead and cannot be used again and you have to nickname each pokemon that you have in order to make losing them even more heartbreaking so taking these rules and trying to apply them to elden ring is not an easy task now in my research i found that there isn't really any official rule set for this challenge at least not a general one it's more so different people have their own form of rules that they like to follow so after looking around at suggestions and ideas that other people have done i made a rule set that i think works well for me so i'll give you a quick rundown of them First, if I die, I need to discard all weapons and talismans that I have equipped. I decided not to include armor in this rule since armor, at least in my opinion, isn't super crucial to builds as much as it is to just fashion. I am, however, not allowing myself to use any of the armor that increases any stats, like the Okina mask or the Silver Tear mask or anything like that. Next, if I ever run out of weapons, I am considered dead and the run is over, and I must always have at least one weapon equipped at all times if able. Also, if me or my spirit ashes die in an encounter where they are summoned, they must be discarded and I can't use them again, and I also cannot unsummon spirit ashes. Next, each weapon only has one instance of being usable, meaning if I pick up a Lord Sworn Straight Sword, for example, and I die with it, if I pick up another one, I cannot use it again. Next up, the game is beaten once any ending has been achieved, and it does not matter which one I get. Also, no summoning other players or NPCs unless it is a specific mechanic for a fight. The run begins once I reach the Cave of Knowledge, and my starter class must be chosen at random. Finally, there's no boss or in-combat quitouts, but if I quit out to avoid falls, then that's fine. Using a memory of grace also counts as a death. Now that we have all that set up, let's see how it went. Also, for this first section, I had my friends Alex, Tom, and Jared in the call with me giving some commentary. By the way, if you do like this video and want to see more, subscribe to the channel so that it's easier to find my content. So at the start of the run, we picked our random class and got rolled with the prisoner. And we are going... Prisoner. Now, I don't really have much experience with intelligence builds in Elden Ring. Normally, I stick to strength or dex builds, and even far more common, faith builds. So doing intelligence is something I'm not very used to. Magic Drops it in the chat. Oh. Little did I know what kind of power I had bestowed upon me, as I would soon learn how powerful these spells would be. So I loaded into the run and immediately got smacked down by the grafted scion. Oh, garlic okay. butter. Oh, oh, well, alright. <laughs> I tried my best with him. I ran through the Cave of Knowledge and gathered the very needed runes that I would need in order to help me get a jump start on the leveling process, before taking out Rick at the end of the cave with complete ease. I then entered Limgrave and immediately felt a sense of fear that anything and everything will cause my undoing. I then hit the Church of Ella, talked to Kale and got some supplies, and then made my way to the Gatefront Ruins to get the ability to level up. After clearing the ruins and getting some wolves from Ronnie, I decided it was time to take on the first real boss with the Beast Man of Pharaoh Missoula. Alright, here we go. First boss time. Well, what? first, first world boss. <laughs> Alright, some of the wolves. Three Sentinel! <laughs> I'm not, doing the, I'm not doing the tree sentinel. Not doing the doing tree the sentinel tree for a sentinel. while. No, I am not doing the tree sentinel for a while. Do the tree sentinel. Oh, this is going to be interesting. I don't want to. I'm going to do the exact opposite. And I'm going to do it so that way I have to drop all the clothes who was very easily taken out. At this point, I was very confident with my spells, so I got some more supplies and spent way too long trying to get this invisible beetle on the beach. Come here. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna spend like oh, 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, I need something that sweeps. There you go. Okay, so sweep. Before eventually taking on the Stormfoot Catacombs. Side note, I really don't like these statue cat dog things. They are just the worst to take out. But after a lot of dodging fire and several close calls, I was able to upgrade my drip. You know what? This is better drip anyway. Yeah, much better drip. And then I was ready to take on the burial watchdog. The round uh, table for the first time, yeah, there's get, that one I, guy there. Yeah, but I don't get there for a while. Easy, 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 you giant cat, easy, easy. 
Just hit him really hard. Oh, I'm trying to do that. Why is he doing it four times? Why did he do it four times? No, no, don't no, you, no, no. Don't you kill all my wolves. Oh, I you're win. so dead. I win. Yes. Oh. After almost losing my dogs and a few close calls, I was finally done and made my way to Stormhill, where I met with Roderica and Bernal and began enacting my plan to make this a little bit easier. The first part of the plan was heading into the death-touched catacombs to get everyone's favorite weeb weapon, the Ujigatana. Now the Ujigatana isn't really important for my build or anything, but it does have a very important factor. It has inherent bleed buildup, which would be crucial for the next part of the plan which unfortunately requires me to go into Kaelid, which is the one place you don't want to go to if you are trying to avoid dying. The reason is that if you head to the northern part of Kaelid, known as Dragon Barrow, there is a large dragon taking a snooze that if you kill will give you an irresponsible amount of runes that you can use to jump your levels up fast. Now this dragon has like a gajillion health even at low levels, so the best way to kill it is to use a weapon that has bleeding buildup on it and just keep smacking it and taking huge chunks of its health. The only problem is getting to this dragon is not a very safe journey, as I found out when I stopped for literally 5 seconds to try to grab a chest. Dog. Sure <laughs> oh, I might be dead here. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh. Okay, we're running. We're, I'll come back for that later. I'll come back for that later. I don't need that right now. Yeah, that was... That was terrifying. Anyway, after a long and paranoid trek, I finally found myself at the dragon and started swinging away. About five minutes later, I was 50,000 runes and five dragon hearts richer, so I was becoming quite confident in my abilities. With these new stats, I decided to get some new spells for myself. I headed to Waypoint Ruins and deleted the pumpkin head in the basement to meet Selen in order to learn some new spells. Scholar's Armament? That sounds very good. I picked up Glintstone Pebble and Scholar's Armament, and the build was finally starting to come together. With my newfound skills, I decided to go for the coastal cave and take on the demi-human chiefs. You're right next to it! I, yeah, and I ended up on the sparrow. Oh. Yeah. Don't really need. Easy, 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 easy. Down dog, down dog. Okay, we got this, we got this, we got this. All right, where, where's the it's second over one? here. Yeah, I'm kind of glad I got prisoner now, because this is going to make this so much easier. I think I really confused when I double tap A and I didn't blink. Because now you're used to it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know why I was so I'm afraid of this you. Oh, oh, you guys are still here. Yeah, I really... I really undervalued sorceries in this game. After that, I was starting to get cocky. I was super confident in my build setup, so I started just picking fights everywhere. First, I went into the Limgrave Tunnel to stock up on smithing stones and take out the Stone Troll. Oh, he's over here. We're going to the lift. He didn't even get a chance to do his thing. Who kind of just fell over. Then I decided it was time to make my way down to the Weeping Peninsula. I figured it was time to start fighting some things that were really more. Oh, no! And he died. That's actually big. Okay, so maybe, maybe my confidence was a bit overstepping. This was a rough loss because I only had one staff at this time and I couldn't use any of my spells at this point. Still, I pressed on being extra careful and trying my best to find another staff to replace it. Unfortunately, there aren't any merchants that sell staffs until later in the game. So that means I only had one real option to get another one, the Demi-Human Queen Staff, which requires me to kill a boss. I didn't really have much of a choice, so I just summoned my trusty jellyfish and prayed for the very best.
Oh my I goodness, I should be dead. Somehow, with God's graces giving me strength, I was able to defeat the queen with what was most likely a single frame to spare, giving me my much needed new demi-human staff. After that, I headed back to the round table to upgrade my gear and get ready for the next stage of this journey. Well, that's it for this section of the run. If you guys want to see more, let me know down in the comments. And if you want to see the full uncut footage, I'll have a link to the live stream recording in the description. Let me know if you guys liked this video since I know it was very different from what I normally do. I'll have more Deep Rock Galactic stuff coming soon, but I wanted to do something a little different and I have been wanting to try this challenge for a while now. Let me know if you want to see it continued and if you did enjoy this, leave a like because it tells me what you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time for another video.